Good. Okay. All right. Thanks, Leon. Uh, thank you, all, all of you out there, for joining us today as we talk about uh, officer, instructor, and recruiting special duty assignments, as well as our new boarded process. Uh, my name is Russ Garner. I am the uh, branch chief at AFPC for officer and enlisted special duty assignments, as well as uh, operational and rated staff. Um, the my team with me here today, Mr. Scott Guerin, Mr. Troy Foster, Mr. George McKee, and notably not with us today because she is on some well-deserved leave is Miss Sophia Barnard, who's actually our, our primary POC and has done an awesome job uh, getting us this far in the process. Okay, um, before we start the slideshow, I just want to mention real quick that uh, this program was rolled out really quickly as a uh, priority for the Air Force A-1. Uh, and for the chief of staff, and so uh, we we haven't got it perfect. Uh, we expect a lot of improvements as we go through this process, um, but I want your feedback. So I've gotten a lot of feedback from senior leaders, but I want uh, feedback from uh, from everyone out there. So uh, my email address is russell.garner.3 at us.af.mil. You can find me in the Glo Air Force Global as uh, I'm the only Russell Garner at uh, the Air Force Personnel Center. Uh, so please, if you have if you have feedback on the way this pro this uh, program has been rolled out and uh, things you think that could improve it, please send me those emails directly. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna show you our email address here, our org box here at the end of the uh, presentation, and that's gonna be where you want to send your questions about how how to make this program work for you this year. Okay, uh, now we're gonna get into the slides. Um, the first thing I'll say, uh, officer, instructor, and recruiting special duty is a little bit of a, a, a hard to say term. Uh, we also like to call it force generation. So these are the important positions that uh, that help generate our our force. And so, but uh, the current name is the officer, instructor, and recruiting special duty board. So we'll we'll stick with that term for now. Um, okay. Uh, we will take questions at the end. We also have several uh, questions already. Uh, on some slides that are common, commonly asked questions. So uh, just expect that all the questions will be answered at the at the end of the presentation. Uh, we are using the Air Force uh, Headquarters Air Force A1H slides. So these are the approved slides to talk about this program. Uh, so these aren't AFPC slides. These are the slides from from half, so that we're all uh, speaking the same language and saying the same things. Okay, off to the first slide. Um, <clears throat> big picture, uh, th this process came about from a uh, corona decision last fall uh, where th the chief of staff uh, again wanted to um, express the importance of instructor duty in the Air Force, and uh, but he wanted to put some teeth in it this time. So every five to seven years, the Air Force says instructor duty is very important. But this time, instead of just saying it, we're going to do something about it. So there's, there's two distinct types of instructing. Uh, and so our board really only covers one of those. But, but just to, to clarify right up front, um, there's special duty instructor and recruiting assignments, which includes 81 Charlie, 81 Tango, 82 Alpha, and 83 Romeo duty AFSCs. There's also, uh, for depending on your community, um, a little to a lot of functional instructor duty. Those include T prefix, as well as W prefix AFSCs. Uh, so for example, in the rated community, probably 85% of rated officers do a functional formal instructor duty during their career, whereas in some other AFSCs, they have very few functional uh, instructor opportunities. And so the chief of staff has said that all of this instruction is very important. Um, for the functional instructor opportunities, uh, the DTs have been given direction this year to establish vetting processes to select officers for functional instructor duties. So that is not part of our special duty boarded process that we're here talking about today. But I just wanted to make that clear, especially for those who out there, uh, those uh, non-rated operations or rated officers who are in communities with lots of functional opportunities, that those, those count equally uh, to the special duty instructor opportunities as far as uh, the incentivized things such as the OSB and, uh, and, the, and the message to the promotion board, which we'll talk about later. Okay, so now focusing on special duty instructor op and recruiting opportunities. 
Um, we've developed this new process this year. Uh, it's a three-step process. Uh, currently, we are in the nomination window, so uh, the it's uh, which is through my vector. Uh, it's a platform which is very similar to the developmental developmental education uh, platform in my vector. Um, to where your uh, senior rater, you can uh, express your preferences to uh, participate or not, and then your your what. Regardless of your preferences, now your senior rater has the opportunity to uh, nominate you. Uh, and then there's been some guidance given uh, from the chief of staff to, for a, a nomination quota of 15%. And we will talk more about that in a later slide. Uh, but so right now, we're, you're, you're probably some internal suspenses by senior rater to, to go ahead and express your preferences. And so that then they can make the decision on who they're going to nominate. Uh, and this nomination window is open until the 26th of May. <clears throat> um, 20, 24th of May, sorry. Okay. And then uh, after we get all the nominations in, we are going to hold the first ever OI and RSD board at uh, the Air Force Personnel Center starting on the 24th of June. Uh, with this board uh, this year, it's going to be chaired by Lieutenant General Cotton, who's the AU commander. Uh, next year, probably uh, Yusafa com uh, Commandant will uh, be the chair. But for this year, it's uh, Lieutenant General Cotton. We're going to have members from uh, all of the organizations that utilize uh, special duty instructors and recruiters. Uh, so there'll be 06 representation from all the organizations you see here in the center of my slide, uh, as well as some uh, wing commanders from around the Air Force. Um, <clears throat> the main task is going to be to screen for suitability. Uh, so not like a normal board where everyone's records are necessarily going to be scored and things like that. But this is just to say whether or not you're suitable uh, for ins instructor or recruiter duty. So we're going to be relying heavily on the comments of senior raters because uh, if we look through your OPRs, we're not necessarily going to see uh, a lot of direct information about your, your potential ability as an instructor, um, necessarily. <clears throat> so, um, the board is going to happen uh, in about for about three weeks, or sorry, for about a two-week period there in, in the, the end of June. Uh, the other thing that's going to happen during this board is the uh, ROTC Detachment Commander uh, Board which is gonna happen concurrently with uh, the Instructor Suitability Board. So for that portion of the board, for those that have expressed uh, preference to become an ROTC Detachment Commander, uh, they're going to, those records will be scored similar to how the uh, ROTC Detachment Commander Board has occurred in the past. And then they'll come up with a, a candidate list for, for specifically for ROTC Detachment Commanders. And then the ROTC Commander will use that list to match uh, detachment commanders. And then separately, we'll have a, another candidate list for all of the instructor and recruiter opportunities. Um, we haven't come up with an exact format yet, uh, and we're gonna work with our, our board president and board members to come up with the, with the uh, proper output. But at the end of the day, there will be a candidate list. And then finally, we'll actually get into the matching. And so the, the good part for those of you out there, and I know there's a lot of concern about um, how you're going to be matched to assignments and getting to assignments that you want to go to. And so there'll be a, a talent marketplace match with all of the candidates uh, and then all of the positions that we are going to fill, all the 81 Charlies, 81 Tangos, 82 Alphas, and 83 Romeos. Uh, and there'll be a specific talent marketplace match uh, where you can put your preferences for what jobs you want to do. And then the, uh, the billet owners, in often cases, senior raters or, or their designated uh, folks can put bids uh, for you for those positions. So uh, at the end of the day, we're not looking to, you know, uh, non-ball folks into uh, these positions. We're looking to maximize our volunteers and get people into positions that they want to go to that are highly valued by our senior leaders. Uh, the ROTC detachment commander matching will, again, will occur uh, through the uh, normal process that the ROTC commander has used throughout the years, and, and that's more of a one-on-one -on -one individual basis where she's matching uh, candidates to the detachments that have vacancies uh, 
more on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Okay. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so some of the incentives um, have been laid out this fall, and, and obviously uh, uh, we hope to uh, provide more information as we get closer to these incentives sort of kicking in. But uh, the, for the enterprise itself, again, this applies to all the special duty instructor, but this also applies to all of the functional instructor opportunities. So I could probably improve the slide a little bit. But the enterprise incentives, uh, there will be a section on the officer selection brief um, that will show your instructor uh, and recruiting experience. So anytime you held a T prefix uh, functional instructor opportunity, anytime you held an 81, 82, 83 uh, position, uh, those will be shown on your OSB. And then uh, every for every promotion board, the SECAF has a memorandum of instruction to the promotion board for for items of interest uh, that she want, she or he wants to place uh, emphasis on. And in this case, they, the uh, instructor duty, both functional and special duty instructor and recruiter duty, will be emphasized to the promotion board. Both of those things are going to happen in 2020. So one thing to foot stomp there on the OSV portion, any instructor duty that you've done or recruiter duty throughout your career, even if it was 15 or 18 years ago, uh, will show up on the OSV. So it, so it is retroactive to uh, any previous uh, special duty or functional instructor recruiting duty. <clears throat> and then, uh, again, this is more the, the third incentive there, really more uh, as part of that developmental team action there is all FSCs will include formal instructor recruiting special duties as part of career advancement. So when you look at the career pyramid, uh, the, the senior leaders from your career field will kind of talk about where those opportunities and what and the timing for those opportunities as you advance in your career within within that career field. Uh, other incentive options that are going to be tailored based on the positions. Uh, Two-year assignments, which is going to be great because it's going to give uh, lots of folks the opportunity to go out of their core AFSC for just two years, get that valuable instructor experience, and then get back into the core uh, to, to further broaden their experience within their core. Uh, so two-year assignments is going to be for pretty much everything at Air University um, and in ROTC. Uh, for the USAFA, those are still three years due to the... Uh, experience and, and the degrees required for, for uh, instructor positions up there. And then also for recruiting, because uh, recruiting is one of those things where you, you build a, a pretty good skill set in your first year, and so they need to get a little bit more payback out of, out of each officer they've trained as a recruiter. Um, for ROTC, we'll do alma mater preferences where possible and whenever possible. Uh, so that should uh, pique a lot of interest. Um, also, before I forget, for rated officers, um, we are going to have a limited release of rated officers to do ROTC instructor duty, um, not just as attachment commanders, but also as instructors. So the captains and majors out there that are rated that would like to do ROTC instructor duty, we haven't been able to do this in the past, uh, but now based on this uh, enterprise level uh, interest in uh, special duty instructor duty, we are going to allow rated officers to do these jobs as well. Uh, Follow-on assignment preference is another incentive that's going to be, you know, based on um, what is available in your career field. Uh, so it's going to be a conversation between you and your assignment team as to, uh, you know, what is possible after you do your, your uh, special duty instructor or recruiting assignment. Um, I know the, the senior leaders within those communities in, at Air University at USAFA, and the recruiting service, they're very interested in the, in the follow-on assignments for their members, so they will take special interest in that as well. And then finally, uh, deployment exemption. So uh, while you're serving in formal instructor and recruiting duty um, for the special duty, uh, you will have a deployment exemption uh, generally for the period of your, of while you're serving in that duty. Um, Extensions obviously will, will occur with uh, career field coordination, uh, but generally for that first two to three year period uh, while you're in that instructor duty so they can lock you in 
to focus on instructing or recruiting, uh, you'll have a deployment exemption. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the way ahead. So uh, again, this process is still a little bit fluid, um, but generally we are hoping to uh, close our application window on the 24th of May. Hopefully we'll have enough nominees that then we can prepare for the central screening board, which will happen uh, starting on the 24th of June. Um, at some point in July, hopefully around mid-July, we can release the candidate list. Um, our assignment teams obviously are very interested in these lists, as will everybody in the field. Uh, and then for those candidates, we will give you directions as to how to participate in the talent marketplace match, which will occur probably in August. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll definitely complete it before the normal summer talent marketplace assignment match. Uh, but that, again, it'll be a special talent marketplace window open just for the candidates and just for the special duty instructor and recruiting positions. And then approximately October, hopefully, you know, maybe even in September, we can uh, release our list of folks selected for specific assignments for the entire uh, 12 month period, basically from uh, the summer of 2020 through the, uh, so basically June of 2020 through May of 2021. Uh, okay. Uh, and so then the report, obviously the first report dates being in uh, June of 2020. Starting in 2020, again, we'll, uh, the emphasis for officer promotions, uh, the OSB, uh, we'll have listing of all of your historical and current instructor and recruiting duty. That, again, as I said before, that includes both functional instructor duty as well as special duty instructor and recruiting duty. Uh, again, the SECAF memorandum of instruction uh, will be similar to the paragraph that you see here um, that basically speaks to the importance and the skill set that you gain by, by doing this important duty. Uh, and then uh, going forward too, you'll hear more probably from directly from your developmental teams uh, and the senior leaders within your career field uh, as they include uh, sort of guidance on when they'd like you to try to uh, get these experiences within the bounds of, of your career field and, and, and different opportunities within your career field. Uh, for example, for rated officers, uh, really we want you to get to your first gate prior to doing instructor duty, so 96 gate months, so that you have uh, no complications <coughs> with uh, achieving your gates later within your career. Uh, but again, those, those gui that guidance will be by career field. Okay, I do see a question out there I'd like to hit right away. How will this affect the winter cycle? Um, and so for the winter cycle, um, we still have special duty officer and instructor uh, sorry, special duty office, uh, instructor and recruiting uh, assignments that we have to fill. Um, those will be for the period from uh, October 2019 through May of 2020. So just prior to the window we're going to fill with this board. And so those folks uh, selected for those opportunities, uh, basically you're going to be treated just like uh, as if you were part of this process. So you will have the same incentives. Um, you just you you will just have been matched to your assignment just prior to the first board. So we don't want to uh, create any sort of uh, um, you know A team B team sort of mentality. So if you go do instructor duty as part of the winter cycle, you can consider it just like you were selected through this boarded process. Okay, let's go on to the fifteen percent calculation. So this is this is. Uh, taken up a significant amount of, of my daily life uh, talking about this. And so um, the important thing here is that the, the chief of staff at the very start of this process sent out an APAN message to his senior leaders saying that you will nominate 15% of eligible officers via my vector. Um, each senior rater can, can find their complete list of eligible officers via my vector. Um, and so as a general question is who's eligible? So basically, um, if you are between lieutenant and lieutenant colonel, uh, for rated officers, if you're forecast to have at least 96 gate months by uh, June of 2020, uh, 
and you have the appropriate uh, at least one year time on station by June of 2019, then you are on the eligibility list. Uh, obviously, for folks in joint assignments, for folks on uh, DROSs, uh, it, it gets a little bit more complicated, and so we're going to work through that real time, and then next year hopefully put out a little bit more specific and better guidance based on what we've learned this year. But so that's the basic uh, eligibility list. Um, we've since gotten clarification from the chief of staff and it, uh, basic or from from the A1 saying it's it's it is uh, it's not a will it's more of a should so you should nominate 15 percent uh, but if you're not if, if for senior leaders that aren't nominating 15 percent they have to have a good reason as to why not because uh, these are obviously very important opportunities and um, the uh, our senior leaders want to ensure that we're we're filling these these instructing and recruiting opportunities with high quality officers. Okay, um, let's see. So, as far as the 15% calculus specifically go, those uh, obviously even uh, folks within AETC, uh, senior leaders within AETC and, and senior raiders that have uh, wings or organizations full of folks already doing instructor duty, uh, obviously they don't they, they don't need to uh, nominate a bunch of folks already doing instructor duty. Uh, for this opportunity. So um, the, ba the way that works is if, if you have officers, um, if a senior raider has officers on his eligibility list that are already doing, uh, currently doing either functional or special duty instructing and recruiting positions. Uh, so that would be a T prefix, a W prefix, um, 81, 82, 83. Uh, he can take those officers uh, out of his total before he calculates his 15%. So there's a simple example here at the bottom of the slide. Senior Rater A has 140 eligible officers, uh, and so his nomination quota would be 21 officers, um, because 15% of 140 is 21. Uh, I was able to do that math all by myself. Senior Rater B uh, also has 140 eligible officers, but 40 of these officers are currently T prefix instructors. So Senior Rater B would subtract those 40 from his total, uh, get them to 100 or sorry, 100 officers remaining, and then 15% of that would be 15 officers. Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, this year my vector is not going to do that calculation for the senior Rater, so they're they're going to have to do those calculations themselves. And again, we're not going to be uh, we're not going to be holding anyone hostage over a, a certain percentage. We just, uh, it, it, obviously, it's emphasized from the chief of staff uh, for, for uh, senior raters to nominate 15% of their eligibles, and then uh, we're going to go from there. All right. Um, now we're going to move on to some frequently asked questions uh, that we've already been asked many times. Hopefully, we can, this will uh, answer a lot of your questions. And then from there, we'll go to some questions on Facebook Live as well as some of our questions uh, here on the uh, uh, DCS. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna read through these. Um, so uh, if you've already read them, sorry, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go through these just to, just to clarify any, any confusion. But um, if you opted out and did not provide comments, um, if, you want, if you want to get your, your uh, ODP back so that you can make those comments, please send an email to our org box uh, which we will show here on the last slide, um, and then uh, we can we can get it back to you so that then you can uh, update your comments. Uh, just so so that way, if if indeed your senior rater wants to nominate you, but you 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 still prefer not to uh, do this duty, you can at least then give your preferences, um, which should should be fairly rare. Um, I don't satisfy the time, twelve months conversation by June of 2019, but I do by July or August. Or further on down the window, can I still apply? Absolutely. Um, we just set the cutoff when we did, just to have a, a starting point. And so we're going to relook at that next year. But for those of you that don't quite meet the Thomas Station, but are very interested in this opportunity, absolutely. Again, send us an email, and we will uh, add you to the to the list. Um, the next question concerns joint spouse, and uh, we are certainly going to bend over backwards to ensure that uh, for any joint spouse couples that are uh, applying for this opportunity that we can get them stationed together. So we are definitely not going to split up any joint spouse families unless they want to be split up. 
in order to be, to be part of this program. So please apply, and uh, we will find an opportunity for both you and your spouse if you're if you're uh, if you make the candidate list to be uh, assigned together uh, while you complete uh, your officer instructing and recruiting special duty. Okay, next slide. Um, for those of you that were previously already sponsored for an advanced degree uh, for USAFA or AFIT, and you know that you're going to be going into an 81T once you complete that degree, you do not need to apply. So those organizations, uh, USAFA, AFIT, they're already tracking you, and they are going to get you back. Uh, and you will also receive credit uh, on your OSB for that instructor duty. So um, if, if, uh, if your name's on there and you need to take us to take it off, we can do that as well. Um, next one applies to folks in joint positions. Uh, so if your joint tour is going to be complete during the window from 1 June 2020 to 31 May 2021, you can apply. Um, and so if your name, if you weren't already on the list of eligibles, we, we again, will gladly add you to the list. Um, previously, next question concerns previous instructor duty. Um, so you've already done an 81T or an 82 or an 83, or you've already done P prefix duty, or you're a weapons officer and you've done plenty of W prefix duty. Uh, you do not need to serve another special duty job. Again, the, the uh, enterprise incentives count for functional instructor duty as well as special duty instructor duty. So, uh, however, that does not block you from applying. So if you if you want to do it, uh, if you're a RAID officer and you haven't been able previously to be an ROTC instructor and now you now is your chance, then absolutely apply. Um, but again, you the OSB and the SECAP MOI will apply to any previous instructor duty. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, there was a question about um, does this cover enlisted? And um, so, no, this is completely an officer program right now. Uh, however, it does mirror a little bit uh, our enlisted uh, developmental special duty program. So, um, but this, this program we've rolled out this year is specifically for officers. <clears throat> okay. However, that being said, Talent Marketplace will eventually cover enlisted assignments as well. So, there may be some opportunity for DSD to happen within Talent Marketplace, but that's a that's off into the future. Okay, uh, assignment team need to release me to complete. No, uh, we are going to let everybody compete on the board, uh, and then we are gonna work with the assignment teams after the board to ensure that we don't take too many officers from any one career field uh, to ensure that uh, we're sort of being fair and equitable across all career fields, as well as ensuring that those career fields can still man their very high priority positions. Uh, but but assignment team release is not required for the for the board itself. Uh, for those of you that are nominated for ID or SD or command, uh, you can also be nominated for this board. Um, and if you're selected for multiple different opportunities, we're going to work with uh, your assignment team, with your commander, as well as with you to determine uh, what is the best option for you. Next question just says the basic, and we've heard this one a lot, I don't want to be nominated, can I say no? So you may elect the I do not desire to be considered button, um, but if, if, if possible, please put in comments prior to hitting that button um, in case your senior rater decides to nominate you. Uh, hopefully we get mostly all volunteers, but uh, if there may be some senior writers out there that see this as a great opportunity for you, and so please be open to that possibility as well. Uh, if I do not volunteer for this board, am I blocked from future boards? Certainly not. We will give you an opportunity every year to apply for future boards, and there are definitely no negative consequences for declining the opportunity this year. We completely understand uh, that there's good times and bad times for certain types of assignments for all officers. And so uh, it may not be the right opportunity for you at this time. Uh, you may be still brand new to your career field and need a little more seasoning within your career field, but certainly you will, you'll have the opportunity into the future. So, and hopefully many of you will volunteer at some point. Okay. Uh, for those of you on the winter 2019 VML, can I be removed to compete for this program? So initially uh, we had all those folks on the VML 
uh, on our eligibility list, but then we realized that uh, that was going to really hamstring our assignment teams. And so most of you that were are there on the winter email uh, have been removed from the eligibility list. Um, however, if you really, really, really strongly want to do this, uh, first off, uh, you may just be able to be assigned through the VML process to one of these special duty assignments. Uh, also, you can ask your team if they could release you from the VML to be to be part of this competitive process. And so check with your assignment team. And then uh, if they if they don't have a specific requirement they need you for in the winter, then then we can add your name uh, to this board. Uh, for those of you that are on a one year assignment, whether that be school or a one year remote uh, that you're going to about to go to this summer and you will now be available in 2020. Um, we don't have you on our eligibility eligibility list, but if you would like to be eligible, uh, just just email us and we will add you to the list. Obviously, in that case, if you're ever added to the list, make sure your senior raters are aware uh, so that they are expecting your application. All right, rated personnel. So uh, also on the topic of rated, I'd like to do a shout out to a major Chris Crouch, a former rated assignment officer at AFPC that brought us a little bit more fidelity on the specific questions from rated officers. And so the bottom line is um, we are, um, allowing RAID personnel to participate. Uh, RAID officers can, for the first time in a long time, uh, participate in ROTC instructor duty as well as recruiting duty uh, that you couldn't previously do except for in a detachment or squadron commander position. Uh, so we are going to do that at a limited numbers. Um, and so uh, absolutely apply if you're interested and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get lots of, uh, lots of volunteers to fill these positions. Um, for those of you that are uh, Lieutenant Colonel Selects, you absolutely can uh, apply uh, and express interest in ROTC Detachment Commander duty. Uh, however, you got to be generally pinned on prior to the report date. So as long as you're going to pin on by the summer of 2020, uh, generally July, uh, you should, uh, you can absolutely apply. Okay. Finally, do senior raters have to nominate 15% of their eligibles? Um, Chief of Staff encourages all senior raters to nominate 15% of their eligibles with the, uh, with the calculation that we showed you on the previous slide. Um, however, there's going to be situations where senior raters uh, don't have 15% of their eligibles that are, that are available for this type of duty. And so we absolutely understand that. Um, and so for those senior raters that aren't, aren't, aren't able to nominate 15%. Obviously, if they have, you know, valid reasons why their officers are, are uh, needed for other requirements, then, then uh, that's completely understand, understandable. And so, uh, but the bottom line is uh, we want to find the right person for every one of these important positions. And so we don't want to make this a, a non-ball process. So hopefully we'll get a lot of volunteers and uh, match people that want to go do this important duty. Probably the most important question here is the, uh, there's our email address. So um, I think you, you see this in the PSDM. Um, obviously, it's here on our slideshow. So uh, please send us your questions uh, and, and the administrative things that you need us to help you with. Again, if you have specific feedback on how this process was rolled out and how we can improve it in the future, I would like you to email me directly, russell.garner.3 at us.af.mil. I am on the global, the only Russell Garner at the Air Force Personnel Center. Okay, uh, we are going to go through some questions now that we've received. Um, and so if, if you want to stay on the line, great. If not, uh, appreciate your participation today. And we'll get through some of the questions that we've seen multiple people ask, both on uh, Facebook and uh, on the DCS here. So. Um, Scott, you have anyone in particular there? Yeah. Uh, there's a couple at the top. Okay. I'm looking for Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Allison Trueblood asked, should we make our intention for teaching assignments is shown in our OPRs or just in my vector comments? This year, we're looking for those comments to be in my vector. 
But as this program grows, then of course we would look, to, if they're gonna be in the OPRs, that's where we'd like to see them. But given this is a brand new program, we, we would like the, the, the comments for teaching assignments to be shown in my vector. Yeah, so really important, uh, if, you, if you're very interested in this program and you wanna be nominated, please have that conversation with your senior rater to, for, for their comments to be uh, specific to your, your capability uh, or your, and your potential as an instructor and or recruiter. Okay, let's see. So we talked about the winter cycle. Again, uh, we've tried to deconflict the best we can. If you, again, if, if you were interested in this type of uh, position, you can potentially be uh, matched to it as part of the winter cycle and or you can have your assignment team release you from the VML so that then you can participate in this boarded process. Um, okay, so for folks that are currently in instructor duty, uh, good question there. If you're already at OTS or ROTC and coded for three years in the current assignment, is that going to change with this new process? So uh, we're going to transition to a two-year assignment. So it is possible in order to to do a, a orderly transition that some of you may have your assignment cut to two years or maybe two years and six months. Uh, we're gonna work with the commanders individually uh, in order so that we don't create big bow waves of folks uh, leaving at the same time. Uh, so there may be some changes, but some of you may serve that full three years. Again, you will have the uh, same uh, incentives as far as the OSB and the MOIs to the board. Um, Okay, we've talked about that. Anderson Dupas. Okay, okay, uh, okay, good question on the folks with overseas DROSs. Um, so we, uh, we probably could have done a better job of clarifying the DROSs. So if, uh, we, again, we're gonna fill assignments between, the report dates will be between June 2020 to May 2021. Uh, so those are the DROSs that we're targeting. If your DROS is significantly after that time, then we would uh, suggest that you apply for next year's board. However, if, you're, if your DROS is uh, you know, maybe a few months later or whatever, and you, you really wanna be considered this year, then absolutely uh, ask your senior rater if they're gonna be willing to release you a little bit early, and then uh, have your name added, and we can, uh, we can add you to the list of eligibles for this board. Um, anything else to add there? We're looking at an edit to the PSDM. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna try to edit the PSDM to clarify. I want to hit that one. Okay. Um, the question was asked about the instructor jobs being fizzled out, instructor positions being fizzled out on hot jobs. Um, you'll see hot jobs okay. be, based off of the board and the results of this board. You'll see a lot of those instructor requirements pared down quite a bit as this board moves forward. Um, we're still going to have hot jobs, but you will uh, likely see much, many, many, or excuse me, you'll see far less instructor requirements for ROTC than you have in the past. Uh, what's, what's posted today will probably be a lot different than what you see a few months from now as we move forward with the boarded process. Okay, uh, good question from Facebook on the, uh, it's effectively, saying, hey, I, if I'm interested in a specific ROTC position at a specific university, and I'm not matched to that, uh, if I'm, say, I'm matched to a different uh, position at a different university, or, or say maybe an AU position at, at Maxwell, uh, what are my options? And so, um, at the end of the day, we are not trying to create a situation where we're non-balling officers to positions they don't want to go to. Uh, obviously, we're gonna have to fill all the requirements, uh, but we want to maximize volunteerism and uh, at the end of the day, we're not trying to punish people or, or try and trick them into positions that they didn't volunteer for. So, so we will, through the maximum uh, possibilities, get an officer to something that they have um, uh, put preferences for. At the end of the day, if, uh, it, as we go through the whole process and you get actually matched to something that you do not want to go to, then uh, we will have that conversation with you and your leadership about the way forward. So the intent is not to kick anyone out of the Air Force through a seven day opt because they didn't get what they wanted. So, uh, but at the same day, obviously we have a lot of requirements to fill. And so uh, we just wanna maximize our volunteers and, uh, and, and fill them with a lot of volunteers. Um, uh, previous question was asked about uh, if for folks that were prior enlisted and did instructor duty. So, 
So those positions, um, right now, that is not something that's going to show up on the OSB, but that was a great question, and so we are going to ask that of our senior leaders to see if, if that will count, because certainly you, uh, many of you had uh, important uh, DSD-type positions uh, uh, when you were prior enlisted, and, and, and certainly that, that is a great uh, experience and important duty that you did for the Air Force. So we'll, we'll ask about that and clarify. Um, let's see. Right here. So, yeah. okay, functionally, what is the sequence for senior raters to input their comments? Does the DE application go to the senior rater for comments after clicking submit or opt out? Does a member have to pre-coordinate comments in the comment section prior to clicking the above? I'm going to pass that over to Scott. Um, yeah, that's a great question. If you, if you clicked opt out, then that's going to lock out your application for any comments by you or to your senior rater. If you do not want to participate in the program, it, we have recommended and a lot of senior raters are requiring their folks to at least provide them comments so they have those and then they submit it to the senior rater that way. That way the, the application doesn't lock out in my vector. So that sequence of events, your senior rater is only going to have that capability if you click submit to them. And yes, you can pre-coordinate comments with your senior rater. They, they would probably appreciate that. And you can select up to five reviewers in, um, in my vector to make sure that all your bases are covered. Okay, uh, we had a question about USAFA AOC positions, uh, obviously as well as the, the um, AU fellow positions. So those, both those positions are uh, uh, special duty, instructor type duty. However, they are still part of the uh, DE process this year. So USAFA AOCs and uh, Air University Fellows will be selected once again this year through uh, the development, developmental education process. Uh, in the future, uh, it is likely we're going to uh, look at a process by which maybe uh, certainly AU fellows might become more part of, of this process but uh, for now that is still part of DE um, and you will be in a, uh, a uh, for the a AU fellow folks you're actually in a 92 uh, position while you're in your uh, student status so that, those are uh, things we're looking at for the future to kind of uh, figure out a good way ahead um, again just to cover one more time the difference between special duty instructor duty and, and uh, core instructor duty. So many of you that were teaching at USAFA previously, you may have been in an 81T position uh, teaching, which is a special duty instructor position. However, you may have also been in a, say, T32 or a uh, T61 position uh, where your instruction was specific to a, uh, a, a core AFSC. Uh, both of those count towards uh, instructor duty. Both of those will count on the OSB. Uh, and will count, um, uh, be part of the stuff that the SECAF is covering on her MOI to future promotion boards. So again, the core positions will be selected through a different process, which is uh, currently managed by the assignment teams, but will have input from uh, the DTs. Okay. Um, can medical personnel apply? So great question here. Uh, so for all non-line folks, um, if we get uh, released from your career field teams, uh, then we will add you to the list and you can be nominated and apply. Uh, there's going to be some limitations for certain AFSCs within the medical world based on uh, some of the rules for utilization of, of uh, those officers. Um, but in others, it, there, there will be opportunities. So you, you need to, I would go directly to your career, career field managers, your assignment teams, and, and they can figure out if it's possible. Um, Okay. Senior rater, my vector. Okay, so here's a question here that uh, Scott's going to answer. If your my vector senior rater is not correct, but it is correct everywhere else, how do you update it, Scott? Well, what we want you to do, or what we need for you to do, is um, email our org box so we can get the board senior rater updated correctly so it hits the level that it needs to hit for you. So our org box email address has come up. Um, if you don't have it, um, it's in the PSDM. Please feel free to let us know what needs to be updated, and we'll take care of it for you. 
Okay, I've got a good question here from DCS. Um, if selected as a candidate, are the chances pretty good that we'll be matched to an assignment? Trying to decide whether to take a three-year bonus, and I have to decide by 31 August. So uh, if we do get 15% of our eligibles nominated, we have about a four-to-one ratio of uh, nominees to actual requirements that we're going to fill. We have about 500 requirements to fill uh, through this process from June of 2020 to, to May of 2021. So uh, as a candidate, we're not sure yet how many folks are going to make the candidate list, but I can safe to say there'll be significantly more candidates uh, than positions. So what that allows is uh, we're going to be able to maximize volunteers uh, to try to avoid sending folks to things that they're not interested in doing. But that also means that there's going to be some positions you know, there's probably uh, 100 uh, Texas A&M graduates out there thinking about Texas A&M ROTC in probably two positions. You know, that's a that's an extreme example, but uh, there's probably some some positions that'll be very competitive just based on uh, the number of folks that might be applying for it. So um, I, it's hard to nail that down. Um, hopefully, as we get through, uh, as we get the candidate list, we'll have a little bit more fidelity, um, and and you, that's something you can always call and talk to your assignment team about as well as talk to my uh, officer special duty team uh, to maybe get a little bit more fidelity as, as we go forward. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, another question here from Facebook. Do you anticipate any guidance coming out regarding the prioritization of this board vice the command and, and IDE, SDE boards? Commanders may be hesitant to push folks for this program if they are upper school or command. That is a great question. Uh, when we started this process, the guidance we got from from uh, Air Force A1 was that um, he did not want to prioritize this or say this is a higher precedence than this. Uh, he, he basically wanted you know everyone to get the best opportunity that works for them at, at, at whichever point they are in their career. And so um, we are going to, as folks are again, if folks are selected for multiple different opportunities, we're going to work with them and their commanders and their assignment teams to figure out. Uh, what works best for them at, at this point in time. And, and so uh, the, the, obviously the commander and the members' uh, inputs are going to be the most important as we go through that process. Okay. Uh, the last one question. Okay. That should be the last okay. one. If, okay. Okay. And then uh, last question. How many... Officer, instructor, and recruiter special duty positions need to be filled in 2020. Again, approximately 500 total requirements. Um, there's a question about how many of those 500 will be rated, uh, and approximately 10% is what we can say uh, is is likely to be. Uh, so uh, on the on the air, area of about 50 rated, uh, we'll have opportunities through this process. Uh, and that will obviously depend on uh, who volunteers for what and uh, and the releases uh, that we can do by career field. And so uh, another important uh, foot stomper is that each career field team and assignment team is going to be able to say, hey, we can we can release this many majors, this many captains, this many lieutenant colonels uh, so that we can still fill all of our critical core positions and, you know, core instructor positions and other core positions. And so uh, we, we'll, uh, we're going to be communicate, over communicating with all the assignment teams and senior raiders to ensure that we uh, make the best decisions and uh, make it as fair and equitable as possible uh, across the uh, force. Okay, uh, really appreciate all of your participation today, and I'm going to pass it over to Leon here for the final instructions. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Just a couple of administrative announcements before we close. Um, I put instructions on the DCS. You can download the slides now. If you're on Facebook Live, the slides will be posted on MyPERS in about one or two days. Also, this webcast is being recorded on the AFPC public affairs site. So if you want to go look at the video, the video should be posted in about 15, 20 minutes on the AFPC public affairs page. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to shut off the audio now. Thank you. You can hang up.